It's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus Dominion painting tutorial and today we are painting Indrasta, the Celestial Spear, the centerpiece of the Stormcast from the Dominion box set and I am so excited to paint her, I couldn't hold it in any longer, I simply had to do it, so I'm doing it, I'm just trying to get rid of a little bit of hair I can spot there on the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump right in and start painting her, she's been primed with grace here. And the place we're going to be working on first is on all of that armor. And we're going to be painting her in the same style as the box art because she's the Indrust of the Celestial Spear. And this is the colors that she pretty much always appears in. Now, the color we're making is a roughly two part Stormhose Silver to one part Retributor armor mix. And we're just going to be painting this all over all of her armor. Like this. Now we've got. So we're roughly two big brushfuls of Stormhose Silver, and then one big brushful of Retributor Armor, all mixed together. And then we've added a little bit of water just to improve the flow, so it comes off the brush nicely, like this. We just want to very carefully paint this all over. It might take two thin coats to get it to a nice strong colour. If it does, don't worry. As you can see, it's already a really lovely pale white gold that we've got coming out now. As I said, we're just painting this all over, all of our armor panels. Like this. So with that done, you should have a really bright, shiny Indrasta. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some shading. Now, some of you would have noticed that I haven't painted in these two comet trails as well as these ones here on the belt, one, two, three, four, and this one under here as well. That's because they're gonna be a very bright silver. Now, the color we are gonna be making is a roughly five parts contrast medium to one part Agaros jeans. We're gonna be using this as a shade over the top of all of her armor. This just gives a very subtle yellowish warm shade over the top of our armor. And you just want to be very careful with how much you have on your brush because if you have too much, it'll get away from you. You get this really dark patch on it, which is something that we desperately don't want. What we want is that kind of tinting that you can see there in the recesses and on the armor panels themselves. So with that done, you should have an Yindrasta that looks somewhat 
like this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to brighten her right up and it's time to get super shiny. The color we're going to be using is Canoptic Alloy. And what we want to do is we want to use this as a layer over the top of the flat parts of her armor. Just avoiding any recesses. Where that shade is really settled. Just like that, over the top of that breastplate there. Same again, we'll just do it here. Like this. Now it might take a couple of thin coats again, because Canoptic Alloy is a layer paint. It's a very thin layer paint. So just take your time. And once you've got this done all over all of her armor, then we'll come back. And with that done, you should now have some beautifully shiny gold armor but what we're going to do now is going to add a little bit more depth into it and this time we're going to be very targeted with how we apply this now we're going to be using a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part cryptic armor shade gloss and what we want to do is we basically want to just drop this in in the finest and darkest recesses so we've got one here and we just want to add this cryptic armor shade gloss to like this We've got this area here. On the ribs. We've got this area here above the breastplate. We've got this little area here. We're going to add it to like so. We basically just want to go around like this, picking out all these kinds of areas that we want to just have a little bit more definition, but also still have a bit of shine to them. Just like this. And just be patient, just take your time. If you do make any mistakes, or you do like blob it, for example, right on top of a flat piece of armor that you definitely don't want it on, what you can just do is just neaten it back up. with some canoptic alloy. And with that done, you should have some beautifully defined shiny golden armor. So what we're gonna do now is the final step. The color we're gonna be using is Stormhost Silver. And we're using this as a highlight across all of our gold. Just picking out all of the edges. Just like this to make it nice and shiny and awesome. So 
So with that done, you should have some truly gorgeous, shiny gold armor. Whew. Look at it. <laughs> Ooh, you know, every so often, every so often. Right, what you're gonna do now is we're gonna move on and we're gonna paint in the soft details in our armor. And the color that we're gonna be using is Black Templar. And what we want to do is we just want to pick out areas such as this little bit here and under her armpit as well. Just be very careful around all of that gold now. Just like this. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to grab some wild wood. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the leather. So we've got areas like the belt. And the various straps and things around the armor. Just like this. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna use some thinned down iron hand steel. And we use this to paint in our silver details. Now this is gonna include areas like the scale mail under here. Like that. It's also gonna include the comet trails that we haven't painted in all around the armor. Like that. And we're also gonna use it to paint in areas such as the sword blade. like that, as well as the business end of the spear. And any of the other areas that you wish to be silver as well. For example, this little section here on the spear, we want that to be silver. Same for this one just here. Like that. So just go around with the iron hand steel, finishing off these areas. Then we'll come back. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some skeleton hoard. I'm going to use this to paint in the paper. Just down here. And with that done, weird as it is to say, we're gonna use some thin down retributor armor. I'm gonna use it to paint in all of the gold details. It's gonna include areas such as the pommel on the sword and the hilt of the sword. Like so. 
And similarly on the spear as well. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Volupus Pink. We're going to use this all over the soft wraps on the sword and the spear. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is going to work on that cloak back here. Now the colour we're going to be using is Flesh Terra's Red. What we want to do is we just want to load up our brush and then we want to use these nice big broad brush strokes. Pick a place to start. I'm going to start on this side. We're just going to do the outside of the cloak for now. Because the inside of the cloak is a different colour. However, what we are going to do on the outside of the cloak is we're also going to run this Flesh Terra's Red into the little... Twin tail comet designs on the outside of the cloak. Well, inside of the cloak. So with that Flesh Terror's Red applied to the Twin Tail Comet design here and here, and of course to the back of the cloak as well, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of extra shading in there. And the colour we're going to be using for this is Wildwood. What we want to do is we just want to add this Wildwood into the deepest recesses on the model. So we've got one here, it comes all the way down like so. We can paint it along that side there like that and then we've also got this one here as well and we can just widen that out a little bit And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Mephiston Red. A little bit more than we normally would as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint this over the kind of large flat areas. So we've got this kind of main one here, which we just want to avoid the recesses. And paint this Mephiston Red out. like so. And similarly, we've got this section here as well. Do you want to bring ground to about there? And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Easel Sun's Scarlet. I'm going to use this to add a highlight all of the sharpest points on the cloak. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Fire Dragon Bright. I'm going to use this as a really small highlight. Like a spot highlight on the sharpest points 
over those Evil Sun Scarlet highlights that we've just applied. Just like this. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna add a glaze over the top just to pull it all together and to finish off that cloak. And the color that we're gonna make is a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part Blood Angels red mix. And what we wanna do is we just wanna get some of this on our brush and then just start painting this very carefully all over the top. Including over those dark brown recesses just to pull it together that little bit. Just like that. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna work on the inside of the cloak and her hair, because these are areas are white. Now the wings are white, but they're a different kind of white, so we're not gonna be doing them now. We're just gonna be doing, like I said, the inside of the cloak and her hair. And the color we're gonna be using for this is apothecary white. So what we just do is we take, we'll start with the hair, we'll take a little bit of this apothecary white on our brush. We'll just paint that all over her hair. Like that. We don't want to forget to do the back as well. Like so. What we're also going to do, as I say, we're going to do the inside of the cloak. For that, we're just going to load up our brush once again. And we're just going to start painting this all over now. It doesn't matter if we get a little bit of this over the top of that. Flesh Terror's Red that we've painted into the Twin Tail comic design. Because Apothecary White is very see-through, so you'll still see that red poking through, no problem. And with that apothecary white applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some thin down gray sear. I'm gonna use this, uh, similarly to how we did the red. What we're gonna do is we're gonna paint this, just on focusing on the cloak. I'm just gonna paint this thin down gray sear over the top of the largest folds, just leaving that apothecary white in the deepest recesses. Just like this. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some Corax White. I'm gonna use this very similarly over the top of where we've done that gray here, but just a little bit more narrowly. So with that done, our white cloak and our red cloak are now entirely finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue on with the base coats. Now, the next color we're gonna be using is Gilliman Flesh, and we're gonna be using this for her face. And what we wanna do, just get a nice amount of this on our brush and then just very carefully pick this out 
pick out her face. Just being careful around the hair that we've now finished, which I don't know if I mentioned in the last clip. We were also highlighting with Corax White. We also want to be careful around all of that gold, of course. So with that done, it's now time to start working on those wings. And the color we're going to be using is a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Space Wolves Grey. This is our initial base coat. I'm going to demonstrate this on the back, but we're also doing this on the front. Now, what we want to do is we just want to very quickly, very carefully, get this Space Wolves Grey mix all over our wings. Just like this. Now just take it a wing section at a time. So I'm just going to do this wing, then do the next wing, then do the inside, and so on and so forth. You just want to be careful because we've got that thin down space was great. You really don't want any kind of dark blobs on here just yet. like that. So with that done, you should have some wings that look somewhat like this. So what we're going to do now is going to start adding a little bit of extra shading in there. And the color we're going to be using is Griff Charger Gray. Now what we want to do is a couple of different things. So we'll, we'll walk you through all of them, obviously. <laughs> so we take this Griff Charger Grey on our brush. And firstly, what we want to do is in this kind of the really small wing section, we just want to paint this Griff Charger Grey all over this little section here. Like this. Now what we do is we wash the brush and then we just, with a clean brush, just kind of smooth out those colors just a little bit. You just use this to kind of mop up some excess and take off the depth of it just a little bit like that. Now you want to do the same thing around here. So we take some Griff Charger Grey. And we add this all over like this. Cut over the top. Similarly on the other side. Just like that. Let me wash the brush and with a clean brush. Just kind of stipple and dab at it to take out some of that color. Like that. Perfect. Similarly, I'm going to do the same thing around here. Charge grey all over like that. A 
Wash the brush. Clean brush. To just mop up that excess. And smooth out that color just a little bit more. Like that. Then what we want to do is a very similar thing on the tips of the wings. However, we only want to do it up to around about this one in a kind of progressive manner. So we will do this on the outside as well. But what we want to do is we want to grab this Griff Charge Grow and we want to start around about halfway between this and this little area here. So we just want to add this Griff Charger Grey, like that. Over the tip of the wing, wash the brush, and then just where the two colors meet, just smooth out that transition just a little bit. You just pull it down a little bit further, like that. And you can add a little bit more Griff Charger Grey to the tip as well, if you want, like that. And basically, you just want to do this all the way down, taking it a wing tip at a time. So we do that one, wash the brush, smooth out. Like that. So we also want to do this on the outside of the wing. And we want to do this on the inside of the wing as well. So you just take your time, get through this, and then we'll come back. And so with that done, on both wings, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Space Wolves Grey. And we're going to do a very similar thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this Space Wolves Grey and we're just going to add it in little patches like that in amongst the smaller wing uh, feathers. These don't have to be completely symmetrical. There we go. Then we wash the brush and just smooth that out a little bit. Like that. So we get that kind of two different tones in there. And then on the tips of the wings, what we want to do is take a little bit of this Space Wolves Grey towards the tip of each of the wings. Like that. And like that. And like that. And then wash the brush and once again just smooth that out a little bit like so and with that done We've basically got all of our shading applied. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some highlights. And the highlight we're going to be doing is a dry brush of Corax White. We want to be very, very, very careful here, very gentle. Just run our brush very, 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 very feather touch. Very, very feather touch. Very gently over the top of all of our wings, just brightening them right up. Just like this. And so with that done, in Druster's wings, 
are now finished and boy do they look awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to start adding some shades. Now the first one we're going to be doing is Griff Charger Grey. We're going to be doing this on all of the kind of silver details that are on her. So we've got areas like the scale mail down here and round here. Like that. We've got the comet trails. Like that. Got this bit of scale mail here, obviously. And up here. And the various other comet trails around her. Don't worry about the weapons. They are going to be a different colour. And with that Griff Charger Grey applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and basilicanum grey. I'm going to use these to shade the weapons. Or at least the silver on the weapons, not the gold. Just like that. And with that basilicanum grey applied to those weapons, what we're then going to do is going to use some Fire Slayer Flesh. I'm going to use this over the gold on the weapons. So with those shades applied, it's now time to add some highlights to the model. And well, the color that we're gonna be using first is Iron Hand Steel. We're gonna be using this on all of the kind of silver that we've just shaded. And what we wanna do is, for example, on areas such as the comets, is we just wanna pick out all of the edges just like that, making them nice and shiny once again. Similarly there, on areas like the plate metal, the scale metal I should say, we just want to use this all over each of the scales. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take some Liberator Gold. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our gold details on the weapons. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down storm host silver. I'm going to use this as a little spot highlight on our silver and on our gold. So for example, here on the weapon on the studs, just want to add a little bit of storm host silver to the tips of each of them. I'm 
like that on the weapons I'm going to highlight the edges to make them absolutely razor sharp and for example on the comets as well And a little bit of Stormhose Silver like that, just towards the tips, just to make them look extra shiny. Similarly again up the top here. Like that. And then on the gold details, this is a little bit of Stormhouse Silver to the sharpest points. And over the top of the gems as well. So with that done, still sticking with the Stormhouse Silver, what we're going to do now is, as you can see from this angle, we've got this quite pleasing effect with the lights where this is brighter and this is darker. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that that is, absolutely stays the way it is. So we're kind of doing a sort of similarly on this blade and on this blade, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be adding a kind of bright shine to them. And what we're going to do is we're going to still, as I say, use Stormhouse Silver, only this time we're going to fin it down with like three or four parts of water. So it's really, really, really thin, effectively creating a silver glaze. And what we want to do is we just want to, on the parts of the model that we want to be nice and no matter, nice and shiny, just want to paint this silver glaze over the top, like that, just down that one half. And because it's so thin, the highlights will still be present, but what will happen is you'll see this kind of shimmer over these sections now you can do this wherever you like you don't have to just do this on the weapons you can do this on the armor if you want just be careful with how much you have on your brush you need a little bit of it because you just want to get that effect there like that So what you could do, for example, and I'll just demonstrate this, you could add this Stormhose Silver, Silver Glaze, just there on the breastplate like that, just to make it nice and shimmery. You could add a little bit. To our Comet Trails. as well, like that. Just like this. And finally, just to complete that effect on those blades, so you can see that one there and that one there, what we want to do is on the opposite side, we want to take a tiny amount of Griff Charger Grey, not very much at all. We just want to add it for example, on the spear, just down here, like that. A little bit more. Like so. And with that done, what we now want to do is we're going to just work on the runes. So we've got one here, one here in the back, and one here, and similarly on the other side, so we've got one on that side of the sword and one on that side of the spear. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some Corax White, and again, we're thinning it down just a little bit more than we normally would. And we want to basically run this inside that rune. 
It doesn't have to be all over. You just want to get something like that. It doesn't have to be a perfect coat. Just want to get this Corax white in there. Like so. Like that. Just add a little bit more in here. Like that. You just want to do that again on the opposite sides of those weapons. And with that Corax white applied in those sections, what we're then going to do is take some ethermatic blue. We're just going to add it over the top. It's a little too much. So with those glowing runes done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Blood Angels Red and we're going to use this on all of the gems. So there's got a couple of them in places like that in the weapon hilts. Like so. And the other one we've got is here on the breastplate. And with that done, just focusing on that breastplate gem for a second, what we're going to do is we're going to take some wildwood. We just basically want to add a dot of this in a semicircle to the top, kind of half of that gem up there like that. And with that wildwood applied, we then just want to take some Luganath orange. We want to run a little highlight around the bottom corner of that middle gem. Like that. And then we also want to add a dot of Luganath orange to the middle of our pyramid sized gems. Just like that. And with that done, our weapons are finished. And boy, do they look awesome. So what we're gonna do now is gonna move on and we're gonna use some thinned down flayed one flesh now. I'm gonna use this to highlight her face. And with that flayed one flesh applied to her face, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some black Templar. We're going to use this to colour in her eyes. And with that done, what we then want to do is take a teeny tiny dot of Screaming Skull and add this to the corners of each of her eyeballs. Just like that. And with those eyes done, what we then want to do is take some pallid witch flesh. We want to use this as a little spot highlight on her flesh. So we just want to pick out areas like the tip of her nose, her brow,
just like this. And with that done, still sticking with the pallid witch flesh, what we're going to do is we're going to use this to highlight our parchment. And next up, just to finish her off, what we're going to do is we're going to make a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part shyish purple mix. And what we're going to do is we're just going to run this over the top of our Volupus Pink Soft Wraps. So rather than highlighting up on these sections, we're just shading them down. The Volupus Pink providing the highlight and the shyish purple providing that little bit of extra depth and brilliance for the colours. Just like this. And so with that, Yindrasta herself is now finished. But what we are going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate how I'm going to paint some of these base details, i.e. the stone, and things like that. I won't be doing the whole base because, you know, we've got a number of basing tutorials and, well, you'll probably base here exactly the way that you want to, but I'm going to demonstrate how to paint the stone and the tree and the various kind of vines and things that are hanging from it. Now, in order to do all the stone, what we're going to do is we're going to create a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Basilicanum Grey and Griff Charger Grey. And what we're just going to do is we're going to pick a place to start. I'm going to start right down here where it makes sense. I'm going to start painting that all over. all of the rocks, well, all of the stone. Just taking it a rock at a time. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Black Templar and Wildwood. We're going to use this all over our tree. And with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to use some Militarum Green. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the vines. And with that Militarum Green applied to the vines and gla uh, grasses, which I forgot to mention, what we're now going to do going to take some skeleton horde I'm going to paint this over the top of the skulls and with those skulls painted in what we're then going to do is going to use two colors we're going to use gorgon to fur and skeleton horde I'm going to use this to paint in the kind of squirrel thing here so what we're going to do first just going to grab some skeleton horde. I'm going to paint this all over. Like this. Of course, don't forget to do the other side as well. Now what we do is we wash the brush, whilst it's still wet, we grab a little bit of gore grunt fur, I'm just going to paint this over the body and the head, like that. Wash the brush, grab a little bit more, 
do the other side as well. Like that. And also add a little bit of it into the base of the tail. Like that. And with that done, all that's left to do on Indrasta is the rest of the base. So this area, the soil and things like that. Now I'm going to be doing mine in the same style as my Celestial Vindicators. So I'm going to be doing the desert bases. So if you want to see how I do that, you can go to youtube.com forward slash poor hipster and check out the how to paint desert bases tutorial. But I'm not going to show it in this one because, well, there's a whole video dedicated to it. So yeah, we'll see you in a second for the roundup. Indrasta is one of the storied champions of Sigmar, charged with serving as his ultimate beast slayer. Streaking through the skies upon brilliant white pinion, she is the terror of the monstrous and an inspiring sight to the forces of civilization. And it's easy to see why. She, she's an absolutely phenomenal model, and that colour scheme is so unique to her that it makes her stand out immediately against all the other Stormcasts. It's really lovely and a lot of fun to put that together. And actually, very simple to get that bright gold, and I'm very, very pleased with the result. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these absolute bosses have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks, just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.